much of Vermont's economy and our livelihood is dependent on our pristine waters. Wildlife thrives because of fresh, clear water. Our waterways provide Vermonters and visitors to the state with opportunities to relax and enjoy life. And clean drinking water is vital to our well-being. We all benefit from this valuable resource, and so we all need to play our part in preserving this precious aspect of Vermont's splendor. Man-made runoff impacts our clean waters and needs to be avoided. Vermont's Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation now encourages loggers to use portable skitter bridges to cross streams. The first time I needed to use a skitter bridge, I had a, a substantial stream to cross. There was, it was far larger than you could get by with pulling it and going through it. So we put a bridge together and it worked really well. Well, skitter bridges compared to culverts and pulled fords are much more economical. Uh, although you have an initial investment to build them, they last you for years and you can use them on many jobs. As from my point of view as a, as a logging contractor, I feel that the skitter bridges have it all over culverts, and both economically and environmentally. Time-wise, you're way ahead of the game. You're going to certainly take up a lot more time to build a bridge on site. Your portable bridge is coming out with you and it's ready for the next job. They are economical, efficient, and provide good water resource protection. Streams like this one that we're standing near have about 800 aquatic species in them, and the habitat for those species is protected when sediment is kept out of the stream. Sediment is the most common pollutant associated with timber harvesting. The portable bridges are probably the best way you can go because a culvert, you're gonna disturb the bottom of the of the brook when you put the culvert in and the pole crossing you're basically disturbing it a little bit all the time. And when that silt from this woods dirt settles into those pools where those fish are spawning that really messes things up for them. This is more than a few fish. This is an aquatic ecosystem. This ecosystem represents a food web that stretches all the way from the solar system to the sea. The water that falls on this land is going to be fed into the Montpelier watershed and the quality of that water should be a concern to everyone who opens a tap and drinks a glass of water in Montpelier. Among the many products that our forests produce, clean water is one of the most important. Trees and forests are natural water treatment plants, better and cheaper than man-made facilities. Many municipalities are concerned with what happens immediately adjacent to their reservoirs. But actually, the quality of the water is determined to a great extent in the myriad of small streams, such as the one where the logger was using a portable skitter bridge to protect the quality of that small stream. Portable skitter bridges are a better alternative for crossing streams, and when correctly installed, are viewed as a best management practice for protecting water quality. Here are a few tips to follow when making them a part of your logging operation. First off, try to locate truck roads and skid trails in a way that minimizes the number of stream crossings or avoid them completely. When your route does cross a stream, select a crossing site where the stream channel is narrow and straight with an unobstructed flow of water. The banks should be stable and well-defined. Ideally, the approaches should be reasonably level for a distance of 50 feet on each side of the stream crossing. Avoid sections of stream where the channel has a steep gradient. You should also avoid steep approaches to the stream crossing. You may not always find the ideal site, but it's important to find the best site. Many different kinds of equipment can be used to install the bridge panels. Whether you choose a forwarder, a skidder, a bulldozer, an excavator, or some other piece of equipment, you will use them to place the bridge over the stream. Here's how we proceeded when setting the bridge with a skitter. Wrap the bridge with a chain. 
use a small logger pole as a fulcrum point to help lift the bridge and to protect the bridge from the arms of the blade. Secure the chain to the blade. Lift just high enough to clear the terrain and transport the bridge to the site. With a forwarder, you can grab the bridge panels with the log loader and place them over the stream. Look how easily the panels go in without any disturbance of the water. Place the bridge panels so that two to three feet of each end of the bridge will be resting on the ground. The panels must be placed tight to one another to avoid spaces where soil could drop into the stream. Make sure that the bridge is placed at an adequate height above the water level so as not to obstruct stream flow. There should be about two to three feet of clearance from water level to the bottom of the bridge. In many cases, you'll want to use an abutment log to stabilize one or both ends of the bridge, to make the crossing level, or to minimize the span. You'd also use an abutment log if the stream bank is soft due to wet soil conditions. Install the bridge between bumper trees, if available, or place bumper logs to help direct logs being skidded across the bridge. This will prevent the hitch of logs from slipping off the bridge and into the stream. Stabilize the approaches with brush and logging slash. The skidder tires will shed any mud onto the mat of brush and logging slash. This will help keep sediment off the bridge deck and out of the stream. Install water bars on both approaches to the stream crossing. Install them 25 to 50 feet back from the stream on each side to divert water from the skid trail and into the buffer strip. Immediately stabilize areas of exposed mineral soil within 25 feet of the stream crossing by seeding and mulching. The buffer strip will filter out any sediment and prevent it from entering the stream. The position of the panels may need readjusting as they are being used if slippage occurs. Inspect the bridge regularly to check for damage and deterioration. In the first year, as the wood becomes dry, the bolts will need to be tightened. Remember, these types of bridges are designed for skid trails only and for temporary use during the active part of a logging operation. A few pointers about removal. Do not drag the panels through the stream. Instead, lift them only as much as necessary and carefully pull them across. Keeping them close to level will keep dirt on the deck from entering the stream. Reshape the approaches if disturbed. Install deep water bars on both approaches to divert any runoff from the skid trail into the buffer strip. Seed and mulch all areas of exposed mineral soil a minimum of 25 feet back from the edges of the stream or to the first water bar. While not in use, store on blocks and take precautions to minimize exposure to moisture. This will extend the life of the bridge. Portable skitter bridges can be made in a variety of different ways. A popular design that is being used around the northern U.S and featured in this video consists of three four foot wide by 20 foot long wood panels. The panels are made using six by eight and six by six inch beams. The beams are alternated when assembled to create a channeled surface on the top side of the bridge. By the way, the bridge you will see fabricated in this video cost about $2,000 in materials based on 2006 prices. The bridge beams were specially ordered and purchased from a sawmill. The steel required to build a bridge represents about one quarter of the total material cost. A bridge that is 12 feet wide by 20 feet long is suggested to cross typical Vermont upland forest streams, where most logging operations are likely to occur. Start by using a 6 by 8 inch beam on the outside edges of each panel. For assembling each panel, the beams are attached by running 3 quarter inch threaded steel rod through the beams at 3 foot intervals. The first hole is drilled 18 inches in from the end of the beam. Instead of centering the holes on the 6x8, offset them so they are instead centered on the 6x6 beam. Use a 7 8 inch bit to drill holes in the beams. You will have more control and accuracy by drilling vertically rather than horizontally. 
After the first outside beam is drilled, put hardware, a four inch square plate, a washer, and a nut on the threaded rods. The nut will protect the rod for the next step. Line up the next six by six inch beam flush to the six by eight inch beam and mark the drill hole locations by tapping the threaded rod through hard enough to make an indentation mark. Use a helper or clamp the beams. After hammering, flip the second beam find the marks, and drill. After drilling the holes, flip the beam back over and drive the threaded rod through. To increase rigidity, nail individual beams together every two feet using 10-inch barn spikes. This prevents flexing between the threaded steel rods, thus making the bridge panel more rigid. Repeat this process until the bridge panel is complete. Tighten the bolts and cut them off. When using a softer grained wood such as hemlock or poplar, the hex nut will have a tendency to pull through into the beam when tightening. That's why we suggest using a 4x4 four four inch steel plate as a bearing surface. To complete the job, a hole is made through the bridge deck and the panel is flipped over. A steel plate with chain attached is bolted onto the bottom of the panel. This feature enables a cable skidder to drag the panels from the log landing to the stream crossing site. Portable skidder bridges allow loggers to harvest timber while maintaining water quality on logging operations in Vermont. To approach a landowner about crossing a stream and explaining that you will bring a bridge in, I believe can really make a, a real positive impression. And, um, Positive impressions are what we need in this business for our land base to stay available for timber management. 99% of the landowners I work for and the foresters I work for are real, you know, they really care about the water quality. I want to lay that bridge down, uh, get the wood out, and when I lift that bridge out and, and see tracks approaching the stream from either side and the stream really undisturbed, it's just a good feeling that you're doing good work in the woods. Hi, I'm Gary Sabrin, Watershed Forester for the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. A recent survey of Vermont loggers indicated that 43% of those who responded are now using portable skidder bridges to cross streams. You might find that portable skidder bridges are the right choice for you as well. I encourage you to contact me if you'd like more information on these bridges or have a question regarding any forest water quality issue. The department is committed to supporting your efforts in keeping Vermont's waters clean and clear. Thank you. For further information, contact the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, 802-241-3678, www.vtfpr.org.